together. Go to bettertogether.help to learn more. AMCO presents Bet You Didn't Know. Bet you didn't know that your car's transmission is made up of 800 pieces. Also, bet you didn't know that AMCO has fixed over 40 million transmissions and that AMCO offers a nationwide warranty. Are you still driving around with that check engine light on? AMCO will read and report the trouble codes on your vehicle for free. Call them today. That's AMCO. Double A. MCO. Red. Red RJ. A double D. To talk toll-free from east of the Rockies, call 800-825-5033. From west of the Rockies toll-free, call 800-618-8255. This is Coast to Coast AM with Ian Punnett. Well, so we were just talking about lost opinions, and so it was then that we are continuing a conversation with Johnny from New Hampshire about America's Stonehenge. He says they work. He wants to share it. We'll talk about it next on Coast to Coast AM. This is the Unpunit. Want to learn a new language so it will actually stick? Try Babbel. Practice real life conversations in the Babbel app. Como te llama? Como te llama? Get personalized help in Babbel's live online classes. Classes are limited to six people, so everyone can get the help they need. Review words and phrases with fun games. Or dive into the culture with short videos. Whatever you're learning from, Babbel gives you the tools you need. Babbel, more ways to learn. Now try Babbel free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Whether you're vaccinated or not, it's important to know the symptoms of COVID and its variants. Fever is the leading sign of COVID yeah, and the yeah, flu, yeah. so make sure you use an accurate thermometer. Only the exogen temporal scanner thermometer has been proven accurate with more than 100 clinical studies. Non-contact thermometers have no clinical evidence behind them, and you cannot rely on them. Be vigilant and seek medical advice at the first sign of fever. Learn more at exogen.com. Real people, real stories. So I had an appointment with the surgeon, and he was telling me what all he was going to do, and it was just absolutely horrendous. I came home, I started on carnivora, and I called and canceled my surgery, and she said, are you going someplace else? I said, no, I'm taking care of it myself. She said, okay. And uh, my problem on my skin went away. I have bruising, actually, that's all over my arms, you know. Three weeks after I was on the carnivore, I noticed, like, I'm looking at my arms, and I said, gee, I don't have any bruises on my arms, but I'm always full of bruises. I can't put my finger on it, but I know something's happening. I have to tell you, that has to be a carnivore. We just cleared out the first time caller line. You can get that one. And the international line, I think, is open, too. Otherwise, we're booked. Let me go to Johnny, who's in Salem, New Hampshire. We were just talking about him before the bottom of the hour. So, Johnny, I do remember this conversation, and I remember looking up more about it after I think it was you, but it may have actually been somebody else, but I think it was you, that said, we're talking about this monolith that exists and that there is sort of this disputed origin about it. What did you what did you find in the meantime about what we now call America's Stonehenge, even though it's not a, a henge properly? <laughs> right. It has the astrological and solar uh, orientations. Uh, but as far as the stone structures, 
what I found out from like our local historian was he directed me. There's a group called New England Antiquities Research Association. They deal a lot with a lot of these New England's full of these stone walls and stone mounds. Right. Uh, they, they have done research on those giants and things too, but uh, where it acutely directed me to was this particular book called The Ruins of Great Ireland in New England. Uh, and whether they're right or not, um, the Irish slash Nordic slash Druid, right. they, they, they kind of take credit for these stone uh, structures and orientations, noting that they're identical to other ones in Northern Europe. Um, so I had never heard that they were identical. I heard that they were kind of evocative or they were similar to, but never that they were identical. And I thought really I what the, the whole, I don't think they say that the whole layout, everything okay. there is identical, but looking at like one cave, they say this cave is made the same way as this game over here. So let me ask you in your conversations, because this is the part, this is always what interests me about history, is that we make some suppositions about who was there first. So if it's true that it was ancient people that did this 4,000-ish years ago, Right? These, these, these carvings, these formations, it doesn't leave out the possibility that other groups came in waves, kept finding it, and kept putting their staff on it without having been the first people to have built it. Where are you with that? Right. I think that's very probable, right. and that adds to, you know, the muddying of the soup where people right. say, well, it's a hoax, it was farmers, or... Right. Uh, you know, attributing it to other groups. I, I well, guess the real question is, we'll probably never know the answer, is who who originally, you know, designed this or built these things. And having been there, I can tell you it's very crude. Uh, you know, yeah. the caves are more cavemanish <laughs> right. looking than uh, they're not really anything that looks anything close to modern. And, and, and or even in a lot of ways, Celtic, and so that's why it kind of surprised me that that art, I thought that would have been kind of fairly debunked. Not that somebody didn't show up there later on and put a mark on it, but that that would have been its origin, because that would have been 4,000 years ago. I think that's what they date that back to, and it's only, like, it, it hasn't been called American Stonehenge even for very long. Before that, it was just an, like a... Uh, it was like a, uh, what did they call it? Like um, Mystery Hill. So that's what they called it. They called it Mystery Hill. And so that seems actually a much more appropriate title because it's much more of a mystery than it's a hinge. I agree. Uh, Ian, I wanted to throw one more thing out at you from your show from the, um, the witch trials in Salem. Yeah. Um, I thought it was hilarious that the powers that be were using this divine seeing you know, essentially witchcraft to right. identify these witches to kill them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Goes to show you again, they were essentially using witchcraft themselves to right. identify witches. To identify witches. And claiming these extraordinary supernatural powers to find other people who had extraordinary supernatural powers. I agree. Yeah. And I, and, and, and uh, that was great. Body is better than your body. <laughs> Right. No, I totally dig that. That's excellent. Appreciate that. Well, thank you, Johnny. Enjoyed that conversation a bit. Let me know if you ever find out more. Steve is trucking in Sodak on coast to coast. Steve, where are you right now as we speak? On to my horn, North East South Dakota. It's a little town I can't read red paint. <laughs> okay, there you um, go. Um, not to sound crazy, I'm like, we're going to take a trip over to the Grand Canyon. Sure. And, uh, I read about it, and your call screener, as sweet as she is, she came back and said, well, it, that never happened. And ancient Egypt artifacts found in the Grand Canyon, you yeah. know, and they said they were steered away by the Smithsonian Institute, you know, the Smithsonian, oh, we don't know nothing about that. But, you know, it's almost like it'd be asked the Vatican, oh, do you have, oh, no, we don't have anything like that. It's, but we can't use, wait, wait, but hold on, Steve, we can't use absence of evidence to be evidence of absence, right? I mean, it's, it is an absolute 
guiding theory in logic. It, you will lose an argument every time to say the proof that it exists is the fact that it's no longer there. I understand that. Okay. And, just, you know, just try to keep it grounded a little bit because I know the thing you're talking about, right? Because this has been going on for a long time. The, the, these early articles that popped out about what had been found in the Grand Canyon. Correct. Yeah. And but you know, it's just something I always found interesting. It's fascinating. I've never been able to get to I've never been able to get to the Grand Canyon. So that. I have always wanted to go to oh, Come time. on. Come on, you're a trucker. You're well, supposed I to buy it. But I just don't have time. You got you got to pull the truck over for you know, half a day, man. You've earned that. I mean, it's Flagstaff, first of all, is a great city. So if, if, if you go anywhere, you're driving through Flag, Flag you're going to like Route 66, uh, and you're going anywhere near Flag, stop in, because it's a, it's a cool mountain town to begin with. But that part of Grand Canyon in particular, really beautiful. And what I, what I need to do is take the train from I-40 that goes up to the Grand Canyon. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. I take, um, I take the train east and of, I've gone east and west of the Grand Canyon on Amtrak. Um, it's, that's a, a beautiful ride. Um, this is a day trip. It's just yeah. coming back and all oh, that I know. stuff. Can I ask you one quick question, Ian? Yeah, go ahead. How's your tinnitus doing? Uh, it never get better. But it will always be something that I've, I've learned to manage it. And I try never to talk about it, but I will make this exception. Um, it, the less attention to I, I pay to it, the longer in the day I can go without hearing it. Frequently, the only time I really am, you know, overcome by it is uh, at night, and that's the time. The only reason I ask is I have the same problem. Yeah. But are you using the proper therapies? Are you trying the things which really do help? I'll leave the truck idling at night. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Ambient noise, right? White I mean, that's, noise. White yeah, noise. Exactly. That's why I drive a convertible. Ah, I don't blame you. Yeah. And, and things are good in the Little Apple? Yeah, they're wonderful. Thank you for asking. And the weather is very autumnal these days. And I keep that top down all the way through, like, the second week of January because it really does help with the tea. So I, hope, I, I wish the same for you, too. And thank you so much for... Jumping in and being patient, hanging on. Let me go to Ronald, who's in Phoenix, not too far from Flagstaff on Coast to Coast. Ronald? Yeah, hi, Eden. Hey, uh, I, have a, I have two questions. Yes, um, about, um, are you going to have the photographer on again uh, talking about the uh, Jordan courtesy? Oh, you know, yeah, it's been a while since we've had a, an update on the courtesy. The last time he was on, he was arrested by the Israeli government and he put in jail for treason? Yeah. Well, so, I think the, the very, it's a very interesting subject. You're right, we are overdoing this. For people that don't know, the, a, a codex is a, kind of an early version of what we would think of today as a modern book, so it takes it out of the scroll form and that uh, these codices that came out of Israel in particular, some of which were uh, verified, others were disputed. I think, I, you know what, I, I've got to do that. I'm so glad you brought that up. I, I should be thinking about that, uh, and I missed that one. So good. I'll return to that. I promise you sometime soon when we get to Leroy, who's in Colorado on uh, Coast to Coast. Leroy or Leroy? Which 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 one do you go with? You call me anything you want, Leroy. You call me and time to eat. There you go. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, a long time this month. Glad to have you. Since the days of our back. Anyway, I do scroll saw work. Oh, cool. And I was just kind of wondering if you got an item I sent you called Moonwalker Combo? I don't think I did. Uh, tell me about that. Oh, it's four little aliens, each one playing an instrument. Well, I will see if I can find out about that. And you did this work no. yourself? Yes. 
Okay, well, first of all, thank you so much for all of the time that you spent listening, going back to the Art Bell days. Uh, and you sound like a delightful gentleman, so I will inquire and find out if I, I can't find out what happened to that uh, package. So have a wonderful night. Let me go ahead and grab Lance, who's in Galloway, New Jersey, east of the Rockies on Coast to Coast. Lance? Hey, I'm Richard. Good evening, Ian. And uh, first and foremost, I want to wish you a happy belated Father's Day. Because, <laughs> uh, as, there are many times that you always start your show and there was some fun doing it. You mentioned your, your two sons, and I yeah, think that's really thank thoughtful. Well, it, thank you, and it, it, uh, they are my batteries, you know. And, I, and you I know what? That's the theory of, I, I think that's one of the positive things about uh, having, being a, a dad. Uh, yeah. It charges you up to do the right thing. Uh, Every time. Which was Every time. So anyway, I, appreciate I, that. I was trying to figure out how come uh, the the, the first first guest from National Geographic. Have they ever found any uh, artifacts of musical instruments that are from various, you know, continents and periods of history? That's sure. number one question. And the second question is, I'm disappointed in the last. I, I guess it's the. Uh, maybe the Smithsonian took it too. The the American work ethic. Uh, because it's not around much anymore, because if I remember as an educator, I used to use the formula of work equals force times distance, and it was measured in joules, the guy. Hmm. But the thing is, now, hmm. when I see it, I don't see the work ethic as I, I grew up with it, and, you know, I'm three score and some, but I just feel that now with... Uh, the way things are and how easy it is to attain information to the uh, internet and all that, I think uh, people just uh, become a little bit too complacent and don't want to put faith in their own ingenuity. I'm, I, I'm, don't, don't go anywhere because I want to I want to address that. You know, I always look at first of all, what did what did the people from a hundred years ago think about us? What would they have? They, would they think about work ethic? Did, what would they think of ours? No soup for you. <laughs> <laughs> like we all have it too easy. We go to the supermarket. We don't have to kill any chickens. We don't have to do any, right? We don't have to, we don't have to milk that cow. We can just go buy milk. So, I mean, I think that part of that is always generational. I work a lot with millennials and Gen Zs. I think that I see lots of evidence of a very, very strong work ethic. It's well, just it's different, but it's just different. It doesn't look like ours. Well, this is this is what I wanted to share with you. I think the formula for work now is this, is W equals B times uh, that. Discover times fulfillment. Right. If you discover what gives you fulfillment, you'll be there all the time, and it's more spontaneous and exhilarating. You know, that's interesting, and the, I think that's probably more true of millennials or even the older Gen Zs, which are referred to as zillennials because they overlap a lot. Um, there's a there's a real mo there's a real movement among the people, roughly you know Gen Z or, or the generation that is a, right now about 24, 25, um, and then below. The the interesting thing is that they are moving back to something which millennials took very. Um, it made it the center of their life, was the idea of doing work with a purpose, um, and that's why you see all of, you know, not just, I mean, I watch CNBC all the time, and every, there isn't a CEO that doesn't come on there and talk about, you know, improving the world, and this is how we're trying to improve the world, and, and that, that resonates with, uh, with uh, millennial investors and, and with the sort of millennial economics. Uh, Gen Z is a little bit more Machiavellian. Which is it. they they yeah. grown up in the era of COVID, and for them making money is a real thing, and they don't look to work to fulfill them. So to hit that fulfillment key, they don't actually look necessarily as a generation. One of the early characteristics, one marker, is that they don't um, think of work as the thing that has to bring them the greatest amount of joy. It's just something that brings them money. And they'll they'll worry about their own joy after they get off work, and I thought that that's an interesting break, and it actually speaks to maybe working a little bit harder to make more money because they want to. 
you know? Uh, I just, I, it seems that they have more of a uh, insightful vision of what the imagination yeah. and I guess the, you, know, you said it earlier, manifest destiny. Maybe work has evolved into another realm yeah. with the help of, you know, electronics and the internet, but, you know, I think that, I don't know, Elon Musk would be a great drum major at the band. Well, and I think you're you're really hitting on something because I think I'm not a Zuckerberg guy, but I, I and I watch I've been watching a lot of the discussion about the metaverse. There there are innovations in monetizing AR, um, you know, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, XR, extended reality, where people will be working in a virtual context and they may never actually go to an office. But they may appear in a virtual office where they walk in as an avatar and they interact with other people's avatars. And they're going to still work eight hours. They can still work eight hours sitting in a comfy chair somewhere and not actually having to get in a car and commute. And think about how that will change everything. Highways, you know, car purchases, um, the cost of petroleum, electricity, electric cars. Um, so, I don't know. Yeah, lots of things coming. I really, great observations, and you need to go um, and, uh, and get to uh, and, and see more of that wonderful state. You, you're in, am I catching you right here in Arizona, right? No, no, in uh, New Jersey. I call New Jersey, that's right. Okay, that's right. Uh, uh, well, because there's a wonderful museum in um, in Arizona, the, the Musical Instrument Museum. And that is one of the coolest places that you could ever go if you ever want to see ancient instruments. Well, let me let me cruise over, and I'm running out of time as I get to the top of the hour. Do I have time enough for uh, Don in Kent, Ohio, on Coast to Coast? Don? Brother Ian, happy Sabbath, buddy. And to you. You know, I wanted to back up the uh, resident atheist wall. Um, you know, from a World, Net, uh, a World News Daily report, Smithsonian missed the destruction of thousands of giant human skeletons in the early 1900s. You know, so I click onto that site. even has a guy in news that, uh, you know, brought a lot of this stuff up in that. And uh, um, so when you, you start jumping around here, they start showing pictures of it. And, uh, you know, these things are, uh, uh, it's amazing what you're finding here. Uh, even Abraham Lincoln, it says in uh, yeah. 1848, stated in the verse, the bones of dead giants were buried deep in the soil in parts of America. So, yep. you know, but again, what we define as giants is the interesting part, because we all have a different, we think C5 Fo Fum, right? We think Jack and the Beanstalk giants, we think Game of Thrones giants, or as some people claim, you know, humans that were 20 feet tall. Well, there's no evidence, there's no evidence of that. But of those very tall humans at a time when people were much shorter, when Abraham Lincoln himself might have been considered somewhat of a giant, according to others. And you go to these museums and you see how small those Civil War uniforms were. They look like children of the war. All right, so uh, we've got so much to get to. So many people hanging out. We'll get to everybody in order. Just hang on. We'll give you the numbers next on Coast to Coast AM. This is Ian Hey, it's Dean Sharp. What does solar mean for your future? Well, that depends on whether your solar is Sunlux Solar. Sunlux Solar means you've unshackled your home from the rising cost of electricity. Sunlux Solar means uninterrupted power during blackouts or natural disasters. It means no more dependence on gasoline because your home fuels your car. Sunlux Solar means saving tens of thousands of dollars over the life of the system. I design homes. I know just how much is riding on your solar. That's why I partner with Sunlux, because Sunlux is solar done right. The most comprehensive warranty of the industry, five-star customer service, critical partnerships with industry leaders like Tesla and LG. With Sunlux, it's a partnership for your home's future, and that future is just a click away at Sunlux. Dot com. That's sunlux.com.
CFLB 100374. The Delta variant is making COVID-19 spread faster and more easily. Variants can be more contagious, aggressive, and deadly. But we know vaccines work. Vaccinated Californians have greater protection against serious illness, hospitalization, and death. We can help stop the spread and end this pandemic. Get vaccinated and wear a mask when it can protect you and others. Find a vaccine near you at myturn.ca.gov. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. That's amazing uh, that he was able to keep that many guns in his house. You know, he should have gone to one of those gun buyback programs. He could have got $200,000 worth of Ralph's <laughs> gun. I, I think if he had gone to one of those programs, he would have set a record for one of those programs. <laughs> yeah, he wiped them out. The Tim Conway Jr. Show. Weeknights at 6. On KFI. Back in Oxford, 8th grade, Huggy Day. So, uh, so Tim is dancing thing. No, no, it really happened. You sold out. Look at that. Uh, somebody asked you to dance? You dance. John and Ken, weekdays 2 to 6 on KFI. KFI, AM 640, more stimulating talk. Life moves pretty fast. <laughs> if you don't like KFI, don't you ain't once in a while. You could miss it. The party don't stop. I'm Andrew Carabella from the KFI 24-Hour Newsroom. A moratorium on short-term rentals in Costa Mesa has been extended for another year. Mayor John Stevens says people have been partying seven days a week in the pandemic. Parties create noise, they create parking issues, and you know the neighbors need sleep and they need a place where they can have the quiet enjoyment of their home. Stevens says complaints of noise, overcrowding, and parking issues spiked last year. He says the council has extended the moratorium for another year to allow for time to create regulations and a permitting process. A former USC senior associate athletic director has pleaded guilty for her role in the college admission scandal. Donna Heinel arranged for more than two dozen students to get into USC as fake athletes. Heinel took a plea deal agreeing to a prison sentence of no more than 46 months. Griffith Park is celebrating its 125th anniversary this weekend, but the party may have a dark cloud over it. The LA Zoo was built in 1966, and zoo officials point out much of the zoo has been changed since then. That's why they've come up with a 20-year redesign and redevelopment plan that would include expanding the facility to add more space for animals, along with things like a possible aerial tram and new restaurants. But opponents to the idea point out that expanding the zoo would infringe on green space, which they say they want to see protected. A petition on change.org against the project has already collected 25,000 signatures. Jennifer Jones, Lee, KFI News. President Biden has welcomed the better-than-expected employment numbers. U.S. employers created 531,000 new jobs in October. Biden says that's good news for the economy. Weekly pay went up in October, and an average hourly earnings up almost 5% this year. The unemployment rate is also down, coming in at 4.6% in October. And the funeral has been held in Washington, D.C. for the first black person to be chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Secretary of State. Colin Powell died last month at the age of 84, COVID-19, with cancer and Parkinson's as contributing causes. The woman who preceded Powell in the job, Madeline Albright, says she sat in on many meetings with him, and he was a master negotiator. He cared only about achieving results, and somehow, through the strength of his personality, he made pragmatism charismatic. President Biden went to the funeral, as did former Presidents Obama and Bush. KFI weather, fog throughout the morning with low visibility. The afternoon will clear with highs in the upper 60s at the beaches, 70 for Metro LAOC. The valleys will see upper 70s, low 80s for the IE. We lead local from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Andrew Caravella. We already have Caltrans working on Ontario. Westbound time for 60. Archibald to Euclid with the carpool and two left lanes shot down. There's also a crash now on the right side of the freeway. So overall, all lanes blocked there. You're back up to Grove Avenue, downtown LA. The 101 freeway northbound and southbound shut down. So Caltrans working northbound side closed between the 5 and 4th Street until around 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Southbound side closed from the 10 to the 5 until 6 a.m. Sunday. You can take the 5 or the 110 freeway instead. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Robert Zubucki. Hey, Gary, how are things? Things are great, but I crushed my mortgage payment with owning without even leaving my couch. I got a no-closing cost refi at a great low rate, and owning did it all in less than three weeks. It was easy. No must, no fuss. Be like Gary. Call owning at 855-5-OWNING and crush your mortgage payment with today's 30-year fixed refi at 2.75% rated APR with no-closing costs. None. 
Zero. Even if you've refinanced recently, call 855-5-ONING and let us crush your monthly payment even more. That's 855-5-ONING or log on to owning.com. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act, subject to credit approval. Call 823-852-6464 for terms and conditions. You can crush it, too, with a 30-year fixed 2.75% rate and APR with absolutely no closing costs. Avoid the gridlock of having to sort through hundreds of resumes to find great people. Indeed's hiring platform makes it easy to attract, stream, and interview candidates all in one place. To find your next great hire, visit Indeed.com slash credit. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a sudden jolt and a submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dijana Figuerella, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean, and there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiment. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses I think few people ever get to see. Glowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes. When we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. A message from the Ad Council. There's nothing better than feeling safe and sound while you gently drift off to sleep. Right, Dad. And speaking of feeling safe, Sit and Sleep is proud to pay tribute to our veterans, active duty military, and first responders to protect us and keep us safe during our Veterans Day sale. This Veterans Day holiday, come to Sit and Sleep and save up to 50% off the largest selection in the USA. With your good credit, sleep interest-free for 12 months with your minimum monthly payment. Plus, save $100 on select models of our exclusive hybrid Infinity mattress. And come try Casper and Nectar before you buy. And as a special thank you to our veterans, active duty military, and first responders, Sit and Sleep is honored to offer a special Veterans Day sale discount. Shop in store, online, or by phone with a trained mattress consultant, and we'll deliver your mattress for free, usually the very next day. To all the heroes who keep us safe and help us sleep a little easier at night. Happy Veterans Day from Sit and Sleep. Hey, I'm Billion Dollar Broker Ryan Serhant, and I'm here to tell you that my very, very popular and successful podcast, Big Money Energy, is returning for Season 2 on October 25th, so subscribe now. Season 2 features conversations with some of the smartest people in the world, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, Ben Baller, Rebecca Minkoff, Jen Slice, and more. Listen to Big Money Energy on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Go solar with local and veteran-owned Sipper Solaris. Visit SipperSolaris.com. KFI AM640. More stimulating talk. To talk to Ian Punnett, call the wild card line at 818-501-4109. The first time caller line is 818-501-4721. To talk toll free from east of the Rockies, call 800-825-5033. From west of the Rockies, toll free, call 800-618-8255. This is... Thank you, Pat, guys. Don's amazing. Ian Punnett. Good old Avicii. Still sad about his... For a there, one nice day. It's truly one of those like, child prodigies that uh, caught everybody off guard, uh, except I guess his inner circle knew his struggles, but...